Wow, Imelda, just look at you. You're wealthy and famous. You're doing great, sweetheart, and I'm proud of you. Aw, thank you so much. But, uh, who is this? I'm sorry, your number is not saved on my phone, so I don't know who you are. You don't have to feel bad, I don't hold it against you. I know how busy you've been these past few years as you've struggled to build yourself. It's me, Stan, your father. What? That's a lie. I'm serious, honey, this is me. It's been so long since we last spoke. We sure have a lot to catch up on. Come on, what's going on in your life? I saw you on TV yesterday. You were awarded for being the most promising entrepreneur of the year. That's mighty impressive, Imelda. Whoa. Are you really my dad? Because if you are, then you know very well that you have no right sending me a text after everything you put me through. Come on, I'm just trying to reconnect with my daughter. What's so bad about it? Oh, you feel that just because you're a millionaire now, I'm suddenly beneath you? You're not ashamed of me, are you? My god, I can't believe your audacity. How dare you try to guilt trip me into taking you back into my life? So I should just welcome you with open arms like the last 20 years didn't happen? Huh? Now is not the time to revisit the past. You and I have a bright future. Let's focus on that. No. Our past is too painful for me to just let go of it like that. And you suddenly coming back like this brings it all to the forefront. Do I have to remind you how badly you hurt me as a child? You never cared about me. Not even when mom is alive. Mom managed to shield me from your abuses as best as she could, but sadly, we lost her. And then I saw you for the monster that you really are. Don't be ungrateful. I was raising you the best way I could. And it turned out great, didn't it? Look at you today. You're one of the most prominent businesswomen in the city. I should be grateful to you? For what exactly? The fact that you refused to send me to school? I barely had enough to eat even though you could easily feed me? You never cared about what happened to me and you showed it all the time. Things only got worse when you remarried. You and your new wife made life a living hell for me. She beat me so many times and you did nothing. Neither did you do anything when she starved me for no reason at all. So tell me again, what exactly should I be grateful for? Fine, but you don't have to be like this, okay? Maybe we did go overboard, but we're better now. Rosie has changed and she loves you so much, just like her own daughter. We're ready to be a family again. God forbid it. Do you remember what you told me the day you dropped me off at Grandma's? You called me a nobody and a killjoy. You said I would never amount to anything and you never wanted to see me ever again. I was just seven at the time. Do you have any idea how badly your cruel words affected me? We're family. We say hurtful things all the time. You cannot use that against me. You have to learn to forgive and forget, girl. Grandma and Grandpa are my family, and not once in the 20 years I've lived with them have they said such mean things to me. You're not my family, so return to your wife. Leave me and my grandparents alone, because as far as I'm concerned, my father is dead. Hi, Nana. How are you doing? Not too bad. I'm preparing to go to bed. Your grandfather is already asleep. LOL. Gramps never messes with his sleep. We all know that. Nana, there's something I need to tell you. My father reached out to me today. He did? Oh, Stan boy. He's really relentless, isn't he? What do you mean? He also reached out to me and your grandfather. He's trying to get back in with us. It was painfully clear why he wanted it, though. He knows now that you're a millionaire and suddenly wants to be one of us again. I'm so sorry, honey. I should have known something like this would happen. You must have been so shocked when his text came in. No, Nana, you don't have to be sorry for anything. You were not the one that abandoned me. He left me behind without looking back. Not even once. I can still remember the countless number of times I called him on the phone, begging him to come pick me up and take me home. And I remember the mean things he said each time. Now, I thank God he didn't come back for me. Who knows where I would have been today? Come on, Imelda. You were just a kid, and you wanted your father. Stan was already a bad father, but getting married to Rosie made him worse. And I'm afraid he has not changed. He won't stop trying to win us over. I don't care. It won't happen. You and Gramps are the sole reason I'm where I am today. The fact that I'm a millionaire is because you sacrificed all you had to see me through business school and invested your retirement savings into my business. I owe everything I have to you and Gramps. Now is the time for you both to reap the fruits of your labor, and I'm not gonna let some stranger come and take that away from you. Never. Melda, it's been two days now and you haven't reached out to your father? Do you have to be so disrespectful? I already told you, I don't have a father. Stop with all this, because nothing will come of all this you're trying to do. What? So, because I was a bit absent from your life, you 
feel you can ignore me and go against my wish? We're trying to rebuild our family. Why are you being so stubborn? I told you I'm not interested. You never wanted to be my family 20 years ago, so I don't want to be yours now. Please, leave me alone. No, I can see what's going on here. It has the handwriting of my mom all over it. I don't want you spending time with your grandma anymore. She's a bad influence on you. What? How dare you? Nana was more parent to me than you could ever hope to be. She took me in after you abandoned me. She raised me to the successful daughter whose life you're trying to crawl back into. And now, you want me to just leave her? I don't abandon family. That's more your style. Shut up and listen. I'm your father, and I know what's best for you. My mom isn't what you need. Believe me. Don't spend time with her anymore. It's for your own good. That won't happen. There's nothing on this earth that can tear me away from Nana. <laughs> Being obstinate won't stop what's gonna happen. You're my daughter, and we're family. Soon, you, Rosie, and I will be together. Stop fighting it because you're only gonna regret it. I promise you. Seriously? Are you really threatening me? It's your fault it's come to this point. Whether you like it or not, we'll be together again. And if you keep frustrating my efforts to reunite us, I'll make you pay dearly for it. Your threats don't mean jack to me. Are they supposed to scare me? Well, they failed. I'm no longer the seven-year-old who cowered every time you raised your voice, or the little girl that ran when your shadow fell on me. I dare you to do your worst. Then we'll see who will be living in regret. You're my family, and I do what's necessary for us to be together once more, no matter the cost. No worries, in the end, you'll thank me for it. Dad, how could you do this to me and Nana? What right did you have to go on air and talk about us without our permission? I'm your father. That's all the permission I need. The TV station wanted to know more about the father of the most promising entrepreneur. How could I turn down the Ralph? That was actually my first time on TV. How'd I do? Huh? How can you ask me that? All you did was lie about me and my grandparents. How could you call me a terrible daughter? You lied about making sacrifices for me, and then accused me of abandoning you because I became a millionaire. Was that a lie? I didn't make a sacrifice, didn't I? Do you think it was easy to leave you behind? <laughs> I'd love to see you convince the public that you're not a terrible daughter. I'd never forgive you for this, Dad. If you had lied only about me, I might have forgiven you. But you had to include Nana and Gramps. You went too far. How could you downplay everything they did for me? Did you know the long hours Gramps had to work just so he could send me to school? What about the multiple shifts Nana had to take so that I would have food in my belly? How dare you say they did nothing for me? They brought me this far and you're trying to steal all the credit while making me look like a terrible daughter. And it's working, isn't it? Or you won't be ranting in my DM. Every blog worth their dime is carrying that interview, and it's trending across all social media platforms. If care is not taken, Imelda, you'll become known as the ungrateful daughter who abandoned her father after she became a millionaire. Tell me, how long do you think your fame and reputation will last after that? My god, I can't believe this. You're out to destroy me. This is my reputation you're messing with. My business is on the line here. How can you do this to your own daughter? Don't be afraid, honey. You forced my hand when you kept fighting our reunion. I have a plan to make it all go away, and you'll be everyone's favorite once more. You'll hold a press conference and admit to being a bad daughter. You will then tell the world that you've learned your lesson. We have to show everyone that we're together once again. So you, me, and Rosie would have to live together. This was your plan all along, right? That's why you had to lie against Nana and Gramps and make me look bad? I won't let this slide, Dad. Since you decided to play dirty, I'll no longer hold back when I'm dealing with you. Stop being stubborn and use your head. What do you think you can do? Everyone hates you. You think you've destroyed me, right? We'll see about that. Mamelda, what on earth did you do? You sneaky witch. You went behind my back to hold a press conference? How could you do that to me? I had to debunk the lies you told about me and my grandparents. I told you I won't let it slide, didn't I? You went too far, Melda. How could you call me a liar? I showed the world who you really are. I told them how you abandoned me when I was seven. I told them how you maltreated me and never did a single thing when I was abused by Rosie. I showed them proof of the sacrifices Nana and Gramps made for me over the years. From school fee receipts to investing their retirement fund into my business. The world now knows you for what you are, Dad. Did you seriously have to go to such great lengths? Everyone hates me now and the internet is mad at me. My accounts are being trolled by your fans and I can't even make a post without getting hateful comments on them. I had to make the rest of my accounts private before things became worse. Are you trying to destroy me or what? Destroy you? 
That's the exact same thing you tried to do to me. But don't get tired just yet. There's still so much more to come. What? You can't be serious. This is just the beginning, Dad. I've already filed a suit, and I'll be charging you to court for libel and defamation of character. I'm gonna make sure you pay heavily for everything you did. Come on, is that really necessary? You've won already, no one likes me. Do you have to take this to court? Of course I do. Okay, fine. I'm sorry, that, that's, that's what you want to hear, right? I'm saying it to you. I'm sorry. Now stay away from me from now on, so don't go further with the suit. I'll leave you alone. No, you can't leave me alone just yet. There's so much more to come. Don't be like this. I already said sorry. What more do you want from me? You shouldn't have come back into my life, Dad. You should have stayed where you were with Rosie. Because now, I'll stop at nothing to bring you down. So relax. There's so much more to come. I suggest you brace yourself. Amelda, I'm sorry. Please, you have to forgive me. I've been crying ceaselessly for days now. I should never have abandoned you 20 years ago. It was a big mistake. Trying to come back into your life was an even bigger mistake. I let your new status get to my head and I wanted it all for myself. I'm so sorry for everything. Um, okay. Okay? That's all you have to say? What more can I say? Amelda, you've basically ruined my life. Your press conference literally canceled my presence on social media. My accounts were trolled and reported and now three of them have been banned. I can't even walk on the street without people recognizing me and hurling insults at me. I'm not safe anymore, both online and offline. People keep attacking me. As if all that's not enough, no one would give me jobs anymore. Prior clients have already canceled their contracts with me because no one wants to work with a man who abandoned his child. This is becoming too much for me to handle. I'm tired. Even Rosie has already left me because the heat became too much for her as well. I'm ruined, Imelda. I'm alone. I'm broke. And I I'm tired. I I'm done. Well, let's just get one thing clear. I didn't ruin your life. You did that all yourself. You tried to destroy me, and if you had succeeded, you would have gladly danced on my ruins. You abandoned me for 20 years and came crawling back because you saw I was a millionaire. And when you realized you wouldn't be coming within an inch of my money, you chose to destroy it. That was a mistake, Imelda. I'm sorry. I should never have done that. The court fined me half a million to pay you in damages. Where on earth am I going to see such an amount of money? I'm already sunk in debt as is. Don't ask me. I'm sure you'll think of something. Come on, Imelda. We're family. I I'm your blood. You're a millionaire and we both know you don't need that money. Please, dear. I, I don't have to pay the fine. Do this for me. I I'm your father, after all. Father? What a joke. Don't you dare keep even a penny of my money from me or I swear I'll haul you right back to court. You'll pay what you owe, to the very last penny. Or, you and I would have another problem. But how can I do that? I already told you how hard things are for me. I don't care. Maybe now you'll have an idea how hard things were for us back when you abandoned me. There were nights Nana and Gramps went to bed hungry just so I wouldn't starve. Soon, you'll know what that feels like. You'll know what it feels like to be drowning in bills, but there's a family member right there who can help but chooses to ignore you because they don't deem you worthy of their time and attention. You deserve everything that is coming to you and more. And there's nothing I'll do to make it any easier for you. Not me, not my grandparents. You're on your own. Come on, have mercy on me. Don't leave me like this. This should be the last time you send me a text or I'll get a restraining order on you. Goodbye, dad. Hold on, Imelda. I I'm your father. You have to forgive me. Please, Imelda, don't do this. Imelda! Dad was never able to get out of debt. Instead, he sunk into worse debt, forcing him to move into the rural areas. There were fewer people there who knew him, and he managed to get a security job at a bank. He never went online again. I and my grandparents moved to the highbrow area of the city where they got the best life possible in their old age. I hired round-the-clock help to take care of them so all they would do was relax and have a good time. They deserved it. I fell in love not long after with a man who loved me so much. We dated for over six months, and now we're planning our wedding. I've never been so happy before. My life is just perfect. Effie, I can't believe you do such a thing. How could you lie to my sister just so you won't have to take care of our baby? Did you really have to go that far? Huh? What are you talking about? Don't you dare try and act ignorant here. You left Cindy with Diana, didn't you? She's just two weeks old. Why would you do that? Newborn babies are to be handled with love and care. You know that. 
Honey, it seems there's a mix-up somewhere. I didn't take Sunday anywhere. Don't lie to me, okay? I'm disappointed that you'll put the life of our newborn baby in danger just so you can hang around and do nothing. She's too young for you to leave her alone. Lying to my sister that you're sick? That's despicable. Just stop with all this, okay? I'm innocent of whatever it is you're accusing me of. Cindy has never left the house since she was born. You know that very well. The only place I've taken her is to the hospital. More lies! I know she's with Diana right now. You've been exposed, so just give up already. Doug, Cindy is not with Diana. She's right here with me. Matter of fact, she's sleeping right in front of me. What? That's a lie. Fine. Give me a minute. I'll take a picture of her and send it to you. Can you see her now? You can look at the timestamp if you're not convinced. Uh, hold on, Cindy's really with you? Of course. Who else will she be with? I thought she was with Diana. I can't believe this. How could you think I'll do such a thing when I'm perfectly fine? You came in guns blazing, shooting off accusations, and didn't even give me a chance to explain myself. You should know me better, Doug. I'm disappointed in you. You're disappointed? Well, now you know how it feels. This is the exact way I felt last week when you accused me of cheating and refused to believe me. What? How can you bring that up now? You know they're two different things. Not really. You believed I cheated no matter what I said. I've been trying to convince you, but you don't even want to talk about it anymore. Why won't you just believe that I'll never hurt you like that? Please, can we not do this now? We have more pressing matters, like why you believed Cindy was with Diana. Diana told me herself. She called me over an hour ago asking that we hire a nanny because taking care of Cindy on her own was beginning to affect her work. She believes you're sick and in the hospital. She really wants to help, but taking care of Cindy is too much for her. She even offered to pay half the nanny's fees. None of these make sense. I never told her I was sick and I never gave Cindy to her. Are you saying she's lying? If she was lying, it wouldn't be so bad. But if she was saying the truth, then she's with a baby she believes to be Cindy. I have to talk to her right now, Doug. I need to find out what is really going on here. Diana, I've been calling your line for over an hour, but you've not been answering. Is everything okay? Hi. Everything is fine. I was in a Zoom meeting and couldn't answer your call. I only just managed to get Cindy to sleep, so I wanted to use the free time to catch up on work. Effie, is this about me calling Doug? I am sorry about it, considering everything you're going through, but this is just too much for me to handle. Mom would have loved to help, but she's too busy with her volunteering obligations. I had no choice but to ask Doug. We can get a nanny to take care of Cindy until you're out of the hospital. I'll even foot half of the fees. I don't mind. Uh, I'm not sick, Diana. I'm not even at the hospital. What? What do you mean? Do you really have a baby there with you? Of course I do. I'm with Cindy. I've been taking care of her since you got admitted to the hospital three days ago. Diana, that's not possible. Cindy is right here with me. She's never left my side since she was born. There's no way the baby you're with is Cindy. What? Is this a joke or what? Please, I don't like this. I don't recall ever telling you I was sick. It wasn't you, it was Dad. He was the one that handed the baby to me. He told me complications from the delivery arose after you were discharged. You had to be rushed to the hospital to save your life? He told me not to call you or Doug because you both wouldn't be able to answer. I've been scared since then, Effie. Everything went so great with the delivery, so I couldn't understand what caused the complications. I even went to the hospital and didn't find you. Dad then told me you were transferred somewhere else. Effie, are you saying that you're okay? I'm fit as a fiddle. Nothing happened to me and I was never rushed to the hospital. I'm sorry, Diana, but I don't think your father was entirely truthful to you. Cindy is right here, so the baby with you definitely belongs to someone else. I don't understand. Why would he do something like this? I don't know. He lied about me and Cindy, and that's so not cool. He made you take care of a baby thinking she was Cindy, and that's just sick. Is he home right now? No, he went out early this morning. Mom isn't home either. Doug and I will be coming over soon to get a better grasp of what's happening here. Okay then, I'll be expecting you. Hi, Doug, are you there? Effie, sorry I had to cut her call so abruptly. I can't take any more calls for now, I can only chat. No problem. I already told you everything Diane said to me. I really can't understand why your father would do such a thing. It doesn't make sense at all. We really need to clear up the confusion. Can you come with me so things don't get out of hand? Out of hand? Nah, I'm sure you can handle it perfectly. Come on, Doug. You don't need me there. Besides, I'm busy with work and 
I don't know when I'll be done. Just go. When it's over, you'll tell me all about it. Work? Is it really because of work you don't want to come with me? What do you mean? There's another reason you're refusing to come along. I know it. You're right. It's not work. You're pissed at me and you no longer trust me. Ever since we started fighting, it seems we lost our chemistry. I know that if you and I go there, it'll only lead to more fights between us, which is something I'm trying to avoid. Huh? Are you saying that all this is my fault? Do I have to remind you of how exactly you hurt me? You cheated on me while I was heavily pregnant and also soon after I gave birth. You claimed you loved me, yet you didn't hesitate to jump into the bed of another woman. How many times do I have to tell you? I never cheated on you! I swear it! So then, explain the female underwear I saw in your wardrobe. What about the contraceptive pills I found in your drawer, huh? You're not a woman, so there's no way you're the one taking those pills. They're not mine either. So, what do you have to say for yourself? I don't know how those things got there. You have to believe me. I love you so much and I'll never hurt you. Why is it so hard for you to believe me? The evidence is as clear as day. I know how much weight I added due to the pregnancy and I'm sure that's why you no longer find me attractive. So no, while I carried our child and labored to bring her into the world, you were cheating. Do you even have any idea how painful it is? You see what I'm always saying? You never believe me. No matter how many times you bring this up, my story will never change. I never cheated on you, and that's a fact. Go on to my parents' house and find out what's happening. You and I will talk later. As you wish. No need to wait up for me. I'll, I'll be coming home late. As you wish. You cheat. I knew it. Even with the evidence, you lied to my face. You really have no shame, do you? Not this again. I thought you went to see Diana. I'm there right now, and I've seen why you didn't want to come with me to see the baby. That's because it's yours, right? What do you mean? Don't lie to me, Doug. The baby is yours. I know it. She's a spitting image of you. I can't believe this. Is this a joke or something? The only baby I have is Cindy. What is all this you're saying? You really played me for a fool, Doug. I believed you cheated because of my pregnancy, but after seeing this baby, it's clear that you were cheating even before I got pregnant. How could you do this to me? No, this is not true. I never cheated on you. And I have no other child except Cindy. You have to believe me. Huh? Fine. You still want to lie, huh? Let me send you a picture. Can you see her now? Do you see the uncanny resemblance you have to the baby? See, this is all confusing, but I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation for it all. Yeah, I know the explanation. You cheated on me and got your mistress pregnant at the same time I also fell pregnant. Then you used your father to trick Diana into caring of your baby, thinking you could keep it from me. You had the audacity to pretend to be mad at me when you chatted me up today. You knew everything, yet you lashed at me like I was some foolish girl who didn't know how to care for her own child. I can't believe I fell for another one of your tricks again. I feel so used. This is getting way out of hand, Effie. Was it my father who told you the baby was mine? Did he tell you I gave him the baby? No, he's not home. Only your mom and Diana are here. I deduced it all myself. The moment I laid eyes on the baby girl, I knew at once that she was yours. Your secret is exposed, Doug. I'm dealing with your lies no more. You know what? I'm coming there right now. What? You said you have work to do. Yeah, I do. But my marriage is crumbling right now, and I have to do something before I lose it. You and Cindy are more important to me, and I can't lose either of you. So just hang tight there. I'm coming to meet you. Hi, honey. How are you doing? I woke up this morning and found you had already gone off to work. You didn't wake me with a kiss like you used to. Are you still mad at me? I'm sorry I fell for your father's tricks. Anyone could have fallen for them. My father gave it a lot of thought, and he would have succeeded if we had not been careful. I'm glad I was there when he came home last night. That way, we were able to get to the bottom of the matter. Last night was really nerve-wracking. I can't believe your father is capable of doing something like that. The baby belongs to him, but he tried to pass it off as yours. And the great lengths he went to to achieve this is really scary. He planted the undies and contraceptive pills in your wardrobe and drawer. He wanted me to find them, knowing that I would suspect you. That was just wicked of him. He planted them when he came to see Cindy. Throughout that day, he was smiling and laughing with us, 
Yet his mind was dark as he plotted to destroy our marriage. I'd never forgive him for this. You're not the only one who feels that way, honey. I can't even begin to imagine what my mom is going through right now. This betrayal from my father hit her really hard. She never saw it coming. Things just didn't go my father's way at all. His mistress got pregnant, but she didn't want to be a mother. So the moment she gave birth, she dumped the baby with him and ran off. Instead of coming forward with the truth, he tried to pass the baby off as mine and destroy my marriage in the process. This is what made it so painful. Things would never have gotten this bad if he told mom from the beginning. He took it all too far and it crumbled to dust. Honey, I'm really sorry I didn't believe you. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Effie, I'm not mad at you. The evidence was pretty convincing and if I were in your shoes, I might have reacted the same way. I'm just too hurt that no matter the number of times I tried to tell you I didn't do it, you never believed me. I'm truly sorry. Thinking you cheated dealt a huge blow to my self-esteem. I believed it was because I gained so much weight during pregnancy and you didn't find me attractive, so I didn't even try to hear your side of the story. I love you, Doug, and thank you for staying by my side despite how I acted through it all. Come on, I've forgiven you already. None of this is your fault. It's all my father's doing. He said that if you believed the child was mine, you'd be willing to take care of it, which was why he concocted such an elaborate scheme. However, he didn't count on Diana getting fed up. If she'd not called me yesterday, his plan would have worked. Thankfully, that's not the case. Honey, I'm really happy that you and I have made up. I've missed you so much, and I promise to make it up to you today. I'll cook your favorite meal for dinner. We'll be having a great time as a family. Just you, me, and Cindy. Nice. I can't wait to come back home. I'm also glad the fight is over. It was killing me inside that I was losing you, and there was nothing I could do about it. I would never distrust your words again. I promise you, from today, you'll have all my trust. Hi, Effie. I'm sorry I missed your calls earlier this evening. I had to take Mom to the doctor. What? Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. Yesterday was really stressful for her and it affected her health, but she has stabilized now. My god. I'm still reeling from the shock of everything your father did. How could he do such a thing to your mother? She didn't deserve to be treated that way. I'm sure he didn't care about all that when he was scheming. I should also apologize to you, though. I should have known at once that the baby wasn't yours. It's just that when I saw the resemblance, it didn't even cross my mind that it was not Cindy. So, I'm sorry. Come on, there was no way you could have known. Babies all look alike, and what you did was an honest mistake. So don't beat yourself up for it. I guess you have a point. It's just annoying that my mom has to go through so much because of him. Last night, I learned that this was not the first time she caught him cheating. She promised him that if he did it again, she would leave him. He then swore never to cheat again, but here we are. I guess that's why he went to such lengths to hide his affair. He knew your mom would never forgive him. Exactly. She's already kicked him out, and tomorrow I'll go with her to her lawyers so she can file for divorce. She has already spoken to Doug about it, and we're both in support of the move. I am as well. My father-in-law deserves everything that's coming to him. He didn't care about ruining my marriage, so I don't care what happens to him either. He has been begging for her since, but my mom is having none of it. She's fed up with his lies and just wants to move on with her life. That's good. She deserves that much after all he put her through. So, where is he right now? He went to stay in the house his mistress used to live in before she ran off. I really don't know how he would cope because mom basically took care of everything for him. He would find it hard to live on his own, even worse now that he's with a child. I'm sure he'll figure it out. I'm just glad that this matter has finally been settled and we can all move on with our lives. That's what's most important. You're right, Effie. Good night. Good night, Diana. A few months later, the divorce was finalized and my father-in-law was forced to live on his own with his newborn baby. He kept asking for forgiveness, begging to come back into our lives, but we couldn't risk trusting him again after what he did. He remained at his lover's house and to cater to his needs. He was forced to seek employment. As for the rest of us, we've never been happier and closer. Cindy is crawling now and she rarely stays in one place. I love my husband dearly and I'm positive that the future is filled with possibilities. I'm ready to experience it all 